you know, and whatever you think of the situation, he has had an absolutely horrific time. Horrific, right? So tonight was great, and I think he'll feel really good. I know he had a bit of drama with TalkSport or whatever, but, you know, at the end of the day, there's no point sitting indoors. You've got to go out in front of everybody, and that's what he's done tonight, and I think he'll have a spring in his step. I think he'd be an underdog against Tyson Fury, for sure. Um, and I don't think it was a performance that is going to make people think that he can definitely beat Tyson Fury, but I know he can box much better than that. I know against an opponent that's coming to win, he'll box much better than that. And I know next time he fights, he'll box much better than that. So, like I said, that fight's all about timing. And it's like, how long do you wait? If it's there, then it will be difficult not to take it. You take that over a, a not up, not up, not up. So, I mean, look. For me, like everybody else, yeah. But, you know, I think we can't just keep going, train a one fight into a big fight, train, you know. So it'll be up to Derek to sit down with AJ. But like I said, you know, in answer to that question, it's difficult to have those fights and drive the same interest. What might be right for the development of his career might not be right for the commercial number. So you've got to get the balance right. Yeah, I mean, it was a hatchet job from Don McRae. I've already written to him because it was a snide piece because he never asked me for a comment based on what people had said or instance. He, he came up to me on a few separate occasions. If you want to talk about the Chavez fight, Chavez was not my fighter. The, the contract was not signed for Chavez against uh, Danny Jacobs. Nevada Commission turned up to test Chavez, who hadn't signed any agreement for the fight, wasn't under any testing program, and basically said, what are you doing here? And said, I'm not being tested, I haven't even signed the contract. Not my fighter, not my responsibility. From there, Las Vegas had an investigation. Chavez said, whatever, I'm not fighting in Vegas, you can all do one. We made the fight in Phoenix, and I, he didn't want to work with Varda. So we asked for a reputable body, and I asked for the opinion of Victor Conti who now seems to be this uh, you know, saviour of sport, biggest drug cheat in the history of sport, and now seems to have a vendetta against me. I've never even met him. So, you know, Leon Margolis, I texted him earlier. He said some nice words. He said, I'm the most arrogant, hated man in the industry. He texted me, he goes, I, but I do like you. They're all snides. Do you know what I mean? But that article was a joke because he never even asked me to comment on what was said. And that's why he deleted his tweet. If you go and check what Don McRae did. Um, he's a fantastic writer. So that's that situation. What was the other situation? I mean, you, you, you're free to ask me about any comments that Don McRae made in that piece. You're referencing the piece in, um, in the previous interview and things like that. I know they all get thrown into all the time and things in terms of mm. asking with regards to failed tests. That obviously Conor Ben wouldn't return to action until he was clear or at least until he's had that uh, dual process. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like he is going to, you know, by all accounts, we know where other mm -hmm. people kind of get him out in June. But we don't, I don't feel like we've had that conclusion yet. Well, you, 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 we you've had that conclusion from the body and the program that found him guilty, or, or sorry, that he had an adverse finding with. He went through that process. I said to Robert Smith tonight, we need to meet ASAP. <laughs> yeah, okay. I said, well, do you want to try and move forward with this or not? Not really. Like, I don't feel like he'll get any kind of fair crack of the whip, to be honest with you. But nothing changes, in my opinion, of VADA. Like, they are, the, they are the premium testing agency. But at the same time, he went to the people who control the testing. They have reinstated him in the rankings. Commissions are happy to license Conor Ben to move forward to fight because of the process that he went through with the WBC. Should he go through the pro, I don't know how many times I have to say this, should he go through the process with the BBFC? Yes. Can we get them to everybody drop their ego and sit down and have a sensible conversation? I hope so. I asked Robert Smith tonight to do that. Hopefully he comes back to me and allows that ball to start rolling. Benny, that's the clean boxing program test from the first test. What about the second? The second test is a VADA test as part of the camp, and WBC ruled over that as well. They've, they've been in a situation where they made a ruling, reinstated him. Um, when we spoke to the British Boxing Board of Control during this process, they told us that we acknowledge... Uh, I said to Robert, Robert Smith said to me, we don't acknowledge UK uh, VADA testing, so I don't know what we're going to do. This is probably why they took five weeks, 
They should have had a hearing during that process. When Dillian White failed a test, and I, you can, yes, Rob, we know, they had a hearing within two days, yet they had that information for five weeks and didn't have a hearing. Now they want to have a hearing. I agree. I think they should have a hearing. No, 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 not, not from us. He no, he had WBC confirmed to the British Boxing Board of Control that under their process, the test results are confidential. That has nothing to do with making a decision. The ruling that the British Boxing Board of Control came up with was that it's not in the best interest of the sport. They could have made that decision on the day. You, you tell me. They've received two failed tests. Should they have stopped the fight when they received that information? In my opinion? Yes. Yes, why didn't get served on the cease no, and desist? No, but no. Did they, did they, did they, did no, they? Rob, a cease and desist. We just, you've got a decision to make. They made their decision under that ruling. That ruling is so wide, they can make that decision at any time they want. What do you say? You, they're, they're scared to make a decision? It's bullshit. Anyone else? <laughs> for the eighth month, for every day, for eight months? Do you feel like there's a bit of a witch hunt against you because obviously defending yourself on past like you mentioned there, the start of talking about it from your point of view, do you feel like... That what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? There was an article today, <laughs> there wasn't one mention, I'm not even going to say, I mean, you know, you lot know. Frank Warren sits on TalkSport, not one, men not one mention about it. you know what I'm saying. So, of course. Do you feel like, I spoke to Carl Sullivan, um, Carl Sullivan just at Watson Show, he feels obviously a hard done by it, he didn't want to answer any questions because hard they, done they by. had no communication because no one's given him a call about anything, people weren't told about what? I think Callis Ireland spoke to his fighter and wanted the fight to progress. But we said, we have to wait for the board's decision. The board went quiet, they disappeared for a week, they popped back, they disappeared for five days, and on Wednesday, they cancelled the fight. And as I've said to you, the one mistake I made was coming out, talking to you lot, and having the fucking raving hump, with Calla also having the raving hump, wanting the fight to proceed, as did Chris Eubank Jr., and then we sat in their office and we said, we cannot continue with this fight, or even try to. So we have to take our medicine, we understand the decision. As I've said before, I'll say it again, the right decision, 100% the right decision from the British Boxing Board of Control. Why did it take five weeks? You can hide behind letters, you can hide behind whatever you want. If you want to criticise me for waiting for the board's decision, I think you might want to criticise the board for not making a decision for five weeks. Because I speak to Well, okay, well he speaks to everybody else, might, just, might not like you be the first good bit of judgment he's had. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Fucking whatever you want, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Javonta Davis, Van Yeah, Javonta three, Davis, three, fuck Javonta Davis. The thing is, here. it's not a hatchet job, but we don't want to acknowledge Anthony Joshua on April the 1st, April the 8th, Bam Rodriguez going for a two division world championship, plus Ford against Magdaleno, plus a uh, unified world championship with Atmad Aliyev. Two weeks later in Cardiff, one of the best fights we've ever, cards we've ever seen, top to bottom, Rakimov against Cordina, great card as well. Then we go to Guadalajara. Oh, by the way, Tank against Ryan Garcia is part of your subscription as well. Then we go to Guadalajara for the homecoming against Britain's John Ryder. Right, then we've got Katie Taylor fighting in Dublin for the first time ever, fighting two undisputed champions. And then tonight we announce Wood Lara. And you don't think it's a hatchet job, but that's not a great schedule. Who is putting on a schedule like that. It's quiet now, isn't it? Anyway. Barack, am I right? No, right. No, 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 no. You're right. Anyway, you beat the eight new world champions with him and Tate Edwards. Mm. Uh, how pleased have you been with the likes of Bam Rodriguez, El Rey, Hook? I think what it is, Rakim, is I don't want him to fight at a certain level. I feel like if you stay there for too long, you're not going to get the best out of a fighter. You're going to get the best out of Sonny Edwards against Julio Cesar Martinez and Bam Rodriguez. Julio Cesar Martinez fights May the 6th, so it's probably a little bit late to wait for him, but Bam fights on Saturday. I know Robert Garcia and Bam Rodriguez will fight Sonny Edwards next. We've got that June 10th date, which could, you know, was supposed to be Felix Cash against Ammo. I think we have to rule that out right now. 
And I think we have to look for a new headline, which could be Sonny Edwards, could be Fabio Wardley, could be Josh Warrington. But I don't want to keep Sonny at that level for too long. I want to see him in the big fights. And I love his mindset, by the way. And I never really used to like Sonny Edwards. I think he's really bright. I think he's got a great boxing IQ. And I think when you talk to him sensibly, I think he's a very bright individual. He's a great talker. And I think he's a tremendous fighter. Because I'm honest. I had, it, I had it with Dillian White tonight in the toilets. Yeah. Not like that. Yeah, I know. Not quite like that. But, you know, but he said to me, you know, he, like, what's going I said, like, I'll be honest with you. you know, this is what's happening, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'm just on it. And same with Derek. You know, Derek says some, out, like, some crazy stuff. But we've looked after Derek. We've always treated... You know, he moans about never getting paid from other promoters. Did fights. Took years to get paid. We pay him every Tuesday after the fight. We always deliver what we promise. We've given him about eight or nine fights when some say we shouldn't have. And then he won't, you know, so anyway, look, I just, I'm not going to sit here and, and, you know, gas up fighters if, if I don't feel like they should be. And if the fighter doesn't perform in the way that they should, it's like AJ tonight. I'm not going to sit here and say, unbelievable, solid, not spectacular. You know, and you guys, you guys know, know the game well enough anyway. Talking to Sonny, um, obviously his brother Charlie's calling out. Yeah, a bit of a weird one, isn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want to break up their brotherhood. But yeah, no. Um, I think um, son, uh, Charlie's moved out. I, don't, I think Charlie would do his own thing at Bantam, but I think Sonny Edwards has to unify. And I think Frank Warren and um, George Warren rep or work with the other champion, the Delakian. There's no reason why we can't get an undisputed champion in that division. Yeah, he's a bit disappointed because I expected Lee Wood to wait for the winner of that fight, but he was just adamant he wants to activate the rematch clause. So that'll be May the 27th. Josh will fight the winner of that fight, but he may choose to fight on June the 10th as well, possibly. Good fight. I mean, look, he's coming off a tough fight against Lopez. You know, um, need to be a top 15 guy, but, you know, we've got to be careful because the last one we picked was Maurizio Lara. How are we getting on, Dan? Uh, Sweating here. Eh? <laughs> 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 mm. I thought he was great tonight. Yes. I thought Michael Coffey is a very experienced fighter. I think he was catching a lot of the shots, but you have to throw back. You know that, like, and he took one too many, but he was fine. So we always want the show real knockout, but for me, with his experience and his size. I felt like the stoppage was early. As actually did I feel like the, what was the other fight I thought the stoppage was early? Yafai. Yeah, Yafai, yeah, same. I mean, the referee says to Yafai's opponent, walk towards me. He doesn't speak English. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, he, he, he was taking a pace in, but at the same time, and he, he didn't, and he didn't walk towards him, so the ref stopped the fight. But that was a, I felt like the Wardley fight was a quicker stoppage than the other one. Yes, but I, again, I'm not being rude, but I don't think David Adelaide's profile is through the roof fighting at your call. Like Fabio Wardley's just boxing in front of him. Tonight, more people watch Fabio Wardley than watch David Adelaide's last fight, probably about five times as many. And he did it in front of 18,000 at the O2, not in front of 800 at York Hall. So, and it was a small show on BT on Friday night. I know the numbers. Pretty, like, it's very, you know, not impressive at all. But I think he's a good fighter. And I love the fight. And I love that he turns up at the press conference. He's got more publicity turning up at a DAZN press conference than he's got his entire career. How high is Wardley's ceiling? Sorry? How high is Wardley's ceiling? I think it's impossible to tell, isn't it, with that pedigree. But every time I see him, and I thought one of the things that I liked tonight was the way he looked, you know, the way he embraced the crowd, nice and composed, sharp puncher, exciting, very smart individual as well. And I think, you know, we've got Dakers, Clark, Adelaide, in any order. They're the three fights. If he wins the Lonsdale belt outright, going through that, that opposition, I think it would be a, a really impressive uh, slate. Thank you. Um, you said obviously about Derek Pizor well, no, Derek Pizor said about the Dylan White fight, you rather see AJ in there with Dylan Whitehouse? Yes, Derek. yes. 
Yes. I think that's a poor question. Am I joking? Yeah. Um, I still feel it was that 14 fight for him, for him tonight, I think. So I thought it was a good performance. I think um, he's still got a lot to learn. But I really like Ammo. You talk about ceilings. Again, he had a limited amateur career, but he was stopping people in the amateurs. Again, when I need him to settle down with a trainer. He does move around camps a little bit. Obviously, he's had his problems as well. But he's, you, know, you give him the call three or four weeks out, he's always ready. And I think he's an exciting fighter. Yeah, definitely. I think he'll win every round. And, it, and Devin Haney, I believe, that comes back after on the That's why I said he'll win every round. <laughs> <laughs> the obvious question next then, he's, he's always spoke very highly of you, even when he did go to top rank. Mm. He said it's always about the belt, but when he was with you, he did everything you said, paid him well, etc. He'll be looking to link up with Devin, provide him a Depends on the money. You know, I mean, look, we get on great. Like, we're, I met up with him in Vegas the other week. He'd love to, he misses us, he'd love to be back with us. But if he's getting more money elsewhere, I'm sure he'd love to be there as well. But Devin Haney's on a lot of money right now. And it's just, is it the right money? Tremendous fighter. I think the Lomachenko fight's a great fight for him. But I also feel like he'll move to 140 quite quickly after this fight. And then there's some great fights for him up there. You know, everyone seems to be moving to 140. And um, hopefully we can get Jack Cashel in the mix. We've got Liam Paro sitting there. Steve Sparks going to fight on the, uh, the card in Guadalajara. So... Hopefully someone can get a crack. Um, against the right opposition, for sure. I mean, the Dillian White fight is a case of do you go for a stadium or do you put it in the O2? When you get the ticket prices right at the O2, as we've seen in the UFC recently, um, Sometimes it's more economic to do it there. I think it's a great fight for the O2. Um, obviously, if he's fighting Wilder, if he's fighting Fury, of course. Have you ever been talked about in the past? Yeah, I, I think he'd love to do it. I think it's just um, logistically quite difficult. Um, I'd love to do a fight just in Africa in general. I think it would be amazing. Um, I spoke when I spoke to Francis Ngannou. And we talked about that fight. He liked the idea of doing him against AJ in Africa. Um, I think, it, is it the, the anniversary coming up for Rumble in the Jungle? Is that next year or something? I don't know. Pretend you knew, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Are there any other territories that you want to sort of move into now? You've obviously put an Australian big chain of the only global mm. promotion. Is there any other territories you haven't been to yet that you want to do? You've been to Australia, you've met a few shows there. I feel like, feel like Germany was, you know, could be a sleeping giant. I mean, it was a big territory. RTL used to do massive numbers around Klitschko and other fights as well. It just comes down to talent. You know, I don't feel that Germany has a, a deep talent pool at the moment. Italy's been good, but same problem in terms of the talent pool. Spain, Mexico is fantastic. I mean, it's just great to do shows there. Um, but no, no immediate territories. Poland is, is an interesting market. Um, it really, a lot comes down to our broadcaster as well, in terms of where the zone are active, what sports they have in that territory and what they need to add. Andy? Andy? Mm -hmm. Five minutes. How did your conversation with Babbitt go after you the first I haven't really spoke to him. I spoke to his team. We put a great bid in for the first bid. We got beaten in the first bid. Um, and then we got offered the UK rights to buy the UK rights for April 22nd. But we had Cordina against Rapimov. So we couldn't, uh, unfortunately, buy that. But I wish him all the best, and I believe he can beat Rosansky. I think it'd be a good fight. I messaged him the other day. I said, you know, I thought he looked great in camp. Um, and, yeah. How much time? How are we getting on? Maybe another 10 minutes. 10? <laughs> I mean, five. No, he's coming. Yeah, not really.